Taste K. What's good, YouTube? Man, it's your boy, T, man. And today, we got the last video of Caitlin Clark week. You feel me? Now, stay tuned for the next week, man. We got Larry Bird week coming up. But um, this video is, did Caitlin Clark make Angel Reese quit? Now, I don't know what he mean by that. Have you ever seen this? I ain't never seen it. You probably ain't never seen it. Let's watch it together. Let's do it, Caitlin. Let's do it. I'm all for it. You know what I mean? Grab your Dr. Kelp. Come sit down. Let's see what he talking about. Um, If you're new to the channel, subscribe, man. For my returners, man, drop a like. Um, Get down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and concerns. I love that y'all been talking to me on these Kalen videos. Um, but without further ado, let's get straight into it, man. Let's see what they talk about. Reese of the Chicago Sky recently grabbed headlines after it was announced she'd be sidelined for the remainder of the season due to injury, mm. sending shockwaves through the basketball community. All right. A few days after the initial announcement, she took to social media to address her injury. And honestly, let's be real. Injuries suck, and I hate seeing them happen. It's tough for the sport, tough for business, but most of all, it's devastating for the athlete. I wouldn't wish an injury on anyone, ever. That being said, there's been a lot of buzz among basketball fans online, with some speculating that this situation with Reese might be different, that Angel may not be telling the full story. Some fans have made compelling arguments, suggesting that Angel may not be dealing with a season-ending injury. Instead, they believe she might have walked away from the season out of frustration, especially after Caitlin left her in the dust when it comes to the Rookie of the Year race. Well, today I'm going to dive into the facts and lay it all out so y'all can decide for yourself if Caitlin Clark actually made Angel Reese quit. Let's see. What, what, was, the, uh, what was the injury? Do you know? I ain't Paul. Right, you disclose a risk. We're going to let this play if out. Uh, I'm going to try not to pause. If she's reporting it, can't keep no promises, man. Surgery, and I'm going to be huh? one yapper. Before we dive into the details of the injury and what went down, let's quickly set the stage by looking at the history between these two. As we all know, the history between Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark goes back to their college days. Then, ever since they both entered the WNBA, there's been no shortage of drama between them, like the head-smacking incident, cheering on a teammate after she went after Caitlyn on the court, and celebrating with everyone but Caitlyn. If you asked Angel, she'd brush it off, saying there's no bad blood. There's never been beef. Like, we've talked trash to each other at AAU. Like, mm -hmm. that, it's been that. So I think it's really just the fans... Her fans, the Iowa fans, mm -hmm. now the Indiana fans. So, as y'all just heard, she not only claimed there's no bad blood, but also shifted the blame onto the fans, specifically Caitlyn's fans. <laughs> well, that's another story for another day. But the truth is, 17% of all flagrant fouls in the WNBA have been committed against Caitlyn, and a staggering 80% of those come from Angel Reese's team, the Chicago Sky. On the That's... flip side, Caitlin hasn't engaged in any of that behavior toward Angel or the Sky at all, and instead has just been playing basketball at the highest level. Beaver, good ball movement on this possession. Logo shot! Logo make for Clark! I wanted to highlight this dynamic between them because while Angel... What I what I will say is, um, if y'all really felt like Angel had some bad blood or it was really something there, do you feel like uh, Caitlyn would just stay quiet, like she would just just be like whatever? Because it's a it's a difference from if the whole league treating you weird. You can't really say nothing. It's the whole league. It's everybody. You can just be like, it's, but if it's one single person that's always singling you out, I feel like, no, nah, I feel like um, if it was just Angel Reese targeting her and Caitlyn really felt it dear in her heart, why would she be scared not to speak out and say something? You know what I mean? You don't got to make it a beef. 
to let it be known, like, yeah, she on that weird shit with me. You feel me? I feel like Kaylin to speak out and be like, yeah, I don't know why she, I don't know why she be acting like that towards me, but she never said nothing. So maybe it might just be business. Like they said, they, they did grow up playing each other in AAU in the, in the EYBL circuits and stuff. You feel me? So they go way back. So they probably been talking trash, probably been in the same, you know what I mean? Atmosphere all the time. So they know what it's like. They just not, they not locked in like this. You feel me? But they two dogs, so two dogs, two dogs won't go at it. One, one let her game do the talking, and one, one does the talking. You feel me? It's like a, it's like Draymond Green. You know what I mean? Draymond Green don't get too many buckets, a lot of single triples. But he gon' he gonna let you hear about all seven of his points. You feel me? That's how I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know, I'm just giving her the benefit of the doubt, bro. I don't, you know, I don't like to be reaching and assuming. You feel me? She'll insist everything's fine. Her actions paint a very different picture. Anyway, with that being said, the big question today is whether Caitlyn was the reason Angel decided to call it quits for the rest of the season. Well, as we all know, one of Angel's biggest goals this season was likely to win Rookie of the Year and break some records for rebounds and... Of course, double doubles. <laughs> now, on August 29th, ESPN sparked outrage by tweeting out an article saying Angel Reese was leading Caitlin Clark in the Rookie of the Year race. It was completely ridiculous. I mean, when you compare the numbers, it's not even a contest. It's nowhere near close. Just take a look for yourself. In every category, except rebounds, Caitlin outshines Angel. Points, assists, got her in blocks. shooting percentages, steals, and heck, even in blocks, Caitlin dominates across the board. Another reason that tweet was so absurd is that Caitlin had, and still has, her team in a far better position. Before the tweet, the Fever had 15 wins and 16 losses, sitting third in the East while the Sky were struggling with just 11 wins and 19 losses. The comparison just doesn't add up. Are y'all seeing why these two aren't even in the same league and why ESPN posting that tweet was flat out disrespectful? But anyway, after the August 30th game where Caitlin dropped 31 points and handed out 12 assists before leaving with 352 left in the fourth while Angel stayed in to stat pad, any remaining doubt about who deserved Rookie of the Year was completely wiped out. Even Shaq, who was sitting courtside and who came to support Angel Reese due to their LSU connection, had this to say. Clark does everything right. I never spoke about her before because Angel is my girl, but I can truthfully say Caitlin Clark is for real. I'm watching her play and I'm trying to be upset, but she makes the right pass, makes the right play. Girls try to beat her up, and she doesn't complain. She's a great one, even early on in her career. Next. After this game, it was clear to Angel that she wasn't going to win Rookie of the Year over Caitlyn. However, there was still one thing she could do to boost her legacy, break the single-season rebounds record. In the following game against the Minnesota Lynx, Angel achieved that goal, surpassing Sylvia Fowles' single-season record of 404 rebounds. At this point, there wasn't much left for Angel to achieve this season. The Rookie of the Year was already out of reach, and she'd broken the single-season rebounds record, likely set Eesh. some double-double milestones too. But to be honest, the legitimacy of those records is questionable. I mean, in the Fever vs. Sky game, I literally saw Reese stay in the game after Clark exited with 3.52 left, padding her stats with 5 points and 9 rebounds to 10 points and 11 rebounds. If she padded her stats in this game, who knows how many other games she did the same. But back to the story. Reese played I mean, at the same time, though, that's, it's, like, you could say it's stat padding, but if we being real, bro, if you watch ball, not just, you've watched it in the NBA, bro. If y'all losing by a lot, and I got a young, a young fella, I, I let my young fellas, you mean, if, if I was a coach, I let my young guys go out, go play. You feel me? We losing by a lot. You're young, though. Go out there and play, bro. Go get some stats. You feel me? We drafted you high, high lottery pick. 
and we won't and we want to see numbers. You feel me? It's not. It's not like Andrew Reese told the coach, I'm not coming off the game. I'm finna get these stats. The coach like, go ahead. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? So she, what's she supposed to do? Sit down in the middle of the court until they take her out? No, she gonna play. The fuck? You not gonna ask? Who gonna ask to come out the game? Nobody asks to come out the game, bro. You gotta be realistic. Nobody, nobody says that. Nobody, yeah, take me out, coach. It's over. No, you gonna keep playing. You don't give a fuck and be like, all right, coach not gonna take me out. Fuck it. I'm finna go hoop. You know? The fuck I'm in with these garbage niggas. I'm finna go hoop them real quick. It's not stat padding because they not as good as me. Just the starters bust my ass. Y'all can't though. You feel me? That's how I see it, bro. I don't know. A few more games. Finishing the season with wrong. an impressive 446 rebounds, leading the league and WNBA history. And this brings us back to the big question: Did Caitlin Clark push Angel Reese to the point of quitting the season? Well. Angel explained online that her injury occurred during an and one attempt in a game against the Los Angeles Sparks. And I fell on my hand when I got the and one when I fell back, fell on my hand. When I reviewed the game to see what happened, this was the play in question. Let me see. Sets run for her. She can create her own. What a pass inside from Carter. Now, here's the thing. She claimed the injury was to her left wrist, but after that and one, there wasn't even a flinch. Then, after supposedly suffering a season-ending injury, she even shot a free throw and kept playing like nothing was wrong. I mean, just look. Now nah, she definitely she no 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 no. See, look, he reaching. She definitely she grabbed her hand. She I'm not defending her or nothing, but you can you can clearly see her grab her hand after the free throw, bro. Like look. Then kept playing like nothing was wrong. That's, like literally, she literally holding her hand. Come on, bro. I mean, just look. She's fighting for position using her left hand right here. And then, here again. Then, look at this play. She claps so hard, you can literally hear it. Assist tonight. And a foul on the shot sends Diamond. Okay, oh, the sound that was effects, a bit of an though, exaggeration. Guys. It wasn't that loud. But here's the real clap sound. Rebound six assists tonight. And a foul. I've never had a wrist injury, and neither am I a doctor. But if someone's dealing with a season-ending one, should they really be able to do this? I get that adrenaline is a factor, but seriously, come on. The injury supposedly happened in the third quarter, but in the fourth, she played nearly seven minutes, put up seven points, grabbed four rebounds, and even knocked down a three, all with the same wrist she claimed was injured. And the shot looked pretty smooth too, right? In the post-game interview afterwards, she's also moving her wrist around with no issue and didn't mention anything about an injury and wasn't even icing the hand. As I mentioned, I've never dealt with a wrist injury, but is this really normal behavior for someone with a season-ending injury? I will admit, at one point in the fourth quarter, she did appear to rub her wrist a bit, which could suggest some discomfort, but come on. She played nearly 70% of the fourth, hit a three, battled hard, and as I pointed out, in the post-game interview, she was moving her wrist just fine with no ice or anything. As a result, what See, this is my thing right here. That's what I mean. Like, over here, bro, I'm not, we not, we not going to make one person a villain and one person a hero. We not going to do that. You know what I mean? Because everybody human at the end of the day, bro, y'all try to villainize and create scenarios and all type of stuff for people when it's, that's just not what it be. Like, if any, if anybody watching this that play basketball, I play basketball. It's sometimes you get hurt in the game, but your adrenaline rushing, and you not really you like the the adrenaline so high you like I, it hurt you like it hurt. But I'm cool. I'm finna finish the game out. You feel me? I'm finna still do what I do. You feel the adrenaline going, so you can't really feel it as much. But. You get, you know what I mean, after the game, you calm down, take you a shower, you feel you lay down in the bed, you you get the, damn, my shit damn near hurt, you feel me? After, after you already, you didn't play the game, it's the, it hit different at night, the next morning, the next morning is when it hit the worst, you wake up in the morning like, damn, what the fuck happened, you know what I mean? It start hitting, it start feeling different.
You go, you go, you know what I mean? You be like, I'm finna go see what the trainer talking about. I'm finna see what they talking about. You go up to the trainer, they take some x-rays, whoop de whoop whoop You could, you could not even think. You'd be like, I got a little, you know, I got a little sprain. It hurt a little bit. Wrap me up. They, they x-ray you and be like, oh, no, you got a little fractures. You know what I mean? You could play through it, but it's the end of the season. You feel me? You, Kaylin Clark already looking like she going to win the race. Just preserve your wrist. You feel me? We not making the playoffs. What's the point? Do that mean she quit? Or they or the team made her do a, a, a smart thing. You know what I mean? Preserve her limbs. Don't be out there beating yourself up. Somebody gotta somebody gotta tell you the right thing. If they let you go out there and beat yourself up, they don't care about you. And they they don't want you here for long. You know what I mean? But that's just that's just how I see it. I don't know. Many WNBA fans are thinking could be a possibility is this. Angel was already well ahead of everyone in rebounds, and on that same day, Asia Wilson, the only real threat to surpass her, suffered an injury that appeared unquestionably severe. Faced with this scenario, Angel Reese might have seen an opportunity. By announcing her own injury, she could provide a convenient explanation for falling short against Caitlin Clark while also securing the single season rebound record in a rookie year, especially since her main competitor was potentially out for multiple games. Whether coincidental or strategic, she proceeded to do just that, even releasing a video to affirm the legitimacy of her injury. Ladies and gentlemen, when was the last time someone had to go on social media just to convince people their injury was real? Wait, what's Ben doing here? His injury was real, right? Right? Uh, he's funny as hell. <laughs> anyway, here's what some fans online are saying about the situation. As a former pro overseas, having a season-ending wrist injury and still being able to play and shoot a three-pointer is fishy. See, that's what I mean, bro. Like, you can't, don't compare yourself to nobody. Everybody is different. And you see, he using the Kawhi Leonard laugh. Speaking of Kawhi, we watched Kawhi Leonard play in the playoffs last season. He played the full, he finished out the full game versus the Mavericks. I forgot, was he like game two or three? And then all of a sudden, they like, he's out for the rest of the playoffs. How the fuck? And he played the whole game, had 30. Now he's out, you feel me? Like, it's just, it's stuff, some, it, I know it's weird. It don't make sense to you, but that's just how it happened. You know what I mean? We wonder that every day with Kawhi. He would keep practicing with Team USA. Now he can't play in, a, in the regular season. He was just practicing in the summer. It don't make sense, do it. No. I don't, like, you feel me? You can't control nobody, what nobody body do. You know what I mean? But it's, but we ain't going to put her down for that. The fuck kind of shit is that? Zero evidence of an injury on the bench or in the post-game presser. No ice, no taping, no indications of being in pain. And last but not least, 100% she faked the injury because she didn't want to lose to Caitlyn. She is very immature. She already this lost. Is the still lost. Many even WNBA if fans are expressing not. right now about Angel's season-ending injury. And the ironic twist: Angel Reese likely didn't see this coming. Asia Wilson is a beast and only missed one game and is now closing in on that rebound record. As of today, she's just 12 boards away, and by the time this video drops, she'll probably have already overtaken it. Angel, on the other hand, already has the cast on her hand, so it's unlikely she'll be making a return to grab any more rebounds. <laughs> but anyway, what do y'all think? Did Angel Reese quit on the season because Caitlin left her in the dust with nothing no, I don't think he, I don't think she quit, man. That's just my opinion. I think I think the team was just trying to look out. You know what I mean? It's it's rookie season. It's a lot more years you can get that record. You feel me? This rookie season, you average thirteen boards. Cool. That mean you going That mean you that gonna break it easy next year. That's you know what I mean. Don't worry about it. It's just a record. It's just a record that could be broken at any time, at any given moment. You feel me? Just take your time with it. But nah, man. That's the end of the video, man. Y'all give me y'all thoughts, concerns, likes, comments. You feel me? Don't forget to drop a like. You feel me? Uh, subscribe. Turn on post notes, man. We uh, around the corner from that 15K. Let's hit that, man. That been, you know what I mean? That's a nice milestone we trying to hit real quick. But uh, 
Y'all let me know. Y'all think she faked it? Y'all think she quit? Y'all let me know. Am I tripping? I'm, you know what I mean? I'm defending her too much. Let me know. I'm just I'm just keeping it real. But it's your boy Tiski, man. And uh, if you made it all the way to the end of my yapathon, I love you, man. And uh comment down, never quit. You feel me? Comment, let me never quit if you made it to the end of this video. But I'm gonna see y'all boys. I'm gone, fellas. Peace.